Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for coming and watching another video. Um, going to do a bigger version of the Harlequin Bowl. I did not so long ago. Um, bigger blank, obviously. Piece of ash. It's quite porous, so how it's going to finish, I'm not sure. So what I've done is I've just quickly rough turned. This, this is not sanded. And um, because this is quite a soft wood, I'm going to I'll put a mortise in the bottom there rather than a tenon. Because uh, I'm frightened the tenon may snap off. Because, uh, like I say, it's quite a soft wood. So I don't want to put a tenon on there. And then when I'm hollering out the middle, it comes, it breaks. So I've done a mortise. What I'm going to do is I'm, I've am i done it so I can put like a false plate over the top of it. So when it's all done, um, I'll use a darker wood and you won't see it. It'll, it'll be all finished off nice and neat. Um, I've already hollowed some of the middle out, only about a third of it. But basically, just so there's not so much aggression once it's all turned. Um, I thought if I do it now, I haven't got to worry about it so much. So the plan is to get it sanded up to 400 grit, get it all masked, masked off, ready for the Halloween, Harlequin colours or the uh, Hampshire Sheen Carnival colours, and then we will go on from there. So I'm going to quickly get this sanded up, and then I'll come back to you guys once I've got it all sanded up to 400 grit. <laughs> This is now sanded up to 400 grit. I've blown it out of the airline just to make sure we get all the dust out of the grain. So now we're ready to start uh, masking up. So I'm actually going to take, um, on the other one, I didn't take the pattern over the rim. But on this one, I'm actually going to take it over the rim. So hopefully when we look at the bowl, you can see it around the top of the bowl as well as around the bottom. So uh, we're using a, four mil tape I think it's four mil Let's just double check yeah four mil tape and again same as before I'm gonna bring in the black bottom in here all black so it feathers into the colors so I'm not too worried about bringing it right down but what we can do is we can um, bring our tape over and then we can just blow it in afterwards so again as always it's just random random shapes making sure we've got enough to go over the top of our rim because we're going to go over the top making sure that we've got some nice straight lines coming through you don't really want a curved line you want a nice straight line which will look much better than a curve even though it's on a curved bowl we still want nice straight lines if we can get them so we're going to make sure we push these all down nice and tight because if not we're going to end up with bleed through and we don't want that that will be that will really ruin our our bowl so again just random pieces just pull that off of there so this is the bit that well this and the coloring is what takes the time the actual bowl itself is not a major issue but this is what takes the time and where your lines cross over you're going to make sure you push them down nice and tight if not you're going to end up with paint bleeding through on the where the uh, tape is sort of ramped up to the next bit of tape so i'm going to carry on doing this i'm going to play you some lovely um well you might not think it's lovely but some music
all masked up now, all taped up, ready for our colours. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that all the um, all the tape is nice and down firm. So I've got this uh, rubber roll, hard rubber roller here. I'm just going to rub over it, make sure that all the tape is pushed down nice and firm. Because if not, we're going to end up with bleed out through the bottom of it. And we don't want that. And just make sure, oh, there is as well. So now we're ready to start colouring. So we're going to use the Hampshire Sheen Carnival colours for an airbrush. You, if you wanted to, you could paint them, um, but you need to be really delicate around the outside because obviously if you put it too wet around the outside, it's going to bleed through. So I prefer to use an airbrush with low air pressure, low flow, and then that gives you a nice even coat. Now you are going to have to go over in two or three coats to get a good coverage but it's worth just taking your time and getting it right rather than you know messing it all up and then when you come to peel your tape off you get a little bit of bleed through which uh, we don't really want so i'm going to go from lightest colors to darkest color there are eight colors in the set i'm going to be using six different colors um there's two different blues and i'm only going to use one of the blues because uh, if not it's going to look like there's too much blue on the piece and then there's a black as well so the only thing I'm going to use the black for is just to feather in around the outside to give it a bit of a shadow effect so I'm starting off with my lightest colour first and two reasons for that first reason is that if I slightly go over the line it doesn't matter because the next colour will be darker so that I cover it and the second thing is I can use the darker colour or the next colour to clean out my gun so I'm not constantly cleaning out uh, my gun. So I've got yellow. So we're going to do some, we're just going to pick random spots to start with. So let's get in here. And again, it's going to be a nice light coat. If you put it on too heavy, you're going to end up with um, bleeding through, which we don't want. So it's going to be nice light coat. Like I said, we're going to need a couple of coats. So that's our first one. Let's do one down here. And we can always go back over and pick another colour, or not another colour, another area. So just pick random areas to start with. And don't forget, we want to try and go over the edge as well. So that's a second one, and we'll do one here as well. We're just trying to pick random areas. Now the trouble is with the darker the colour you go, the more darker your bowl looks. So trying to get some lighter colours into it um, will really brighten up a little bit. So if you've got a little bit more lighter colours, like yellows, orange, reds, it's not the end of the world. But try and, you know, if you want to, it's, it's all cool. At the end of the day, you do, you do it how you want to do it. Uh, let's do this one here. So we've got one there, one there, one there. Just trying to do them random. Let's do that one there as well, I think. I'm not holding a gun too close. Pattern's quite narrow on this gun, so. Let's 
think we could do with one in here somewhere. Let's do this one here. One there, one there, one there. Yeah, I don't want them uniformed. I don't. That's what I don't want. I don't want uniform patterns. I want just random blodgers. So, like I said, we can always come back and do another yellow if we have to. So let's just just darken these off a little bit by giving them another coat. Like I say, may take a couple of coats. But the artist put several thin coats rather than just one heavy, thick coat. You get much better effect if you just put light coats on than if you just put it on. Because if you put it on too thick, it's just going to bleed through the tape. And then it will... Uh, look really awful because you'll have it through on your lines We've got most of the colouring done. So now what we've got to do is we've got to highlight it with black. So we get the black. I'm going to use the intrinsic black for this one. Uh, the reason being is because I've not actually used the uh, carnival colour black, and I quite like the the uh, the intrinsic colours. So I think I know what I can get away with with this. Again, it's just a bare minimum of. Uh, color. We don't want nothing too heavy. If we put it on too heavy, it's gonna just bleed through, like it has, like we said all along. It's gonna just bleed through. So I'm gonna get a clean bit of tissue, and we'll just get the pattern set right. And this is just the light dusting of black over the edges of the tape. Just so, um, basically, we're just covering the edge of the tape, just so it looks like it's it's a 3D effect. It's just feathering out. So, going to check in the middle. So, we're just going to get a nice little thin bead over the top of our black. Now, we don't want to be too heavy again because we'll end up with bleeding through, like we said all along. So, it's just a gentle. We can always go over and give another coat if we need to. Now 
to find out if we've got any bleeding through or whether it's worked or what we'll see what happens so let's take off these bits time will tell when it Just being careful because obviously the paint's still a little bit green. So we're going to be careful as we can. Come off. So it's looking pretty good actually. Let's make sure we've got no bleed through. It's pretty good. It looks pretty good. And when you take that tape off, the um, the black just makes the colours with the it makes it stand out because it looks like a it's got that 3D shadow to it, so it just makes it stand out a little bit. So the next stage we've got to do is I'm just gonna denib that. Because obviously putting the colour on has just raised the grain a little bit. So we're just going to leave that a little bit just to dry off properly. Then we're going to denib it. And then we'll get it sealed up with two or three coats of sand and sealer. Now we're going to use spray sand and sealer. The reason being is obviously we put a wipe on on there. It's going to start blending all the colours together and we don't want to do that. We want to keep it all neutral and the colours are all independent. So um, I'm going to leave that a little bit to dry. And then I'm going to come back and then we'll dean a bit and then put a couple of coats of sand and seal on it. So one thing I did forget about is that obviously we're going to feather this out just past the edge of this rim. Now rather than using black I'm going to try using ruby and we'll see how it looks. So we're going to speed the lathe up a little bit and I'm going to practice it in here. It'll be a little bit heavier than that. So what I'm going to do is, as I come, as I come over, I'm going to bring the gun away, which should give me a feather line. So we're coming in, and I'm bringing the gun away, so it should give me a blend line. Just to, as you can see, it just feathers that out. So we're just going to keep rebuilding that up until we get a dark. And I don't want to do too heavy because we're having that splatter everywhere, and I don't want that. I'm going to come out, I'm just going to feather that out. So it's gradually getting rid of those. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll do another coat and build, gradually build that up to get our depth of colour. And like I say, we're just going to gently feather that out around this edge. So it's a little bit, just looks a little bit better. Actually, going to change your mind. I'm going to put black on there because that ruby is not really, not really doing what I want to do. It's not really covering up the colours. It's just making that a darker, uh, a darker blue, which is not what I want. I want to cover up the colours. So uh, let's go over to the black and just put a bit of black over the top of it. All right. So let's try black. Like I said, it's not actually doing what I want to do. It's actually 
just making it look like a yeah, that's a bit better even though it's darkening on off the blue a little bit it still looks a bit a bit better Yeah, that ruby just weren't doing that for me. It didn't look quite right. Right, so I'm not going to go no more than that because that'll be too much. So now I've got to wash my gun out again. Right, so it's just Dean just taking the grain down a little bit. So what we're going to do now is give it a couple of coats of sand and sealer, build up the uh, sand and sealer on it, and then what we'll do is we will then go back and just Dean it again and. Uh, Maybe give it a couple more coats of sand and sealer till we build up the the seal on it. So then when we come to finish it, it will uh, be much, much better. Alright, so let's cover our lathe up. Protect the lathe. That's now had three coats of sand and sealer. And I'm not going to leave it that because I'm going to lacquer over the top of it anyway. So now we can start turning the middle out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to, like I said, we're going to make a bit to go in here anyway. But before I flip it, I'm just going to clean that up. Because obviously if I glue a platform in there, it's not going to glue. Because we've got that sand and sealer and all that on there. So I'm just going to... Um, to clean that up with a skew just so we've got a decent something decent to glue to so I'm just going to clean out that like so and then we've got something decent to glue to because the last thing we want is the bottom falling out of it once we've got it in there so that's not very thick but I'm not sure where I'm going to make it so it goes over the top I'm not 100% what I'm going to do yet but that's what we've got so far so let's get it flipped actually let's just clean the bottom of that tenon out as well just in case we've got a little bit of a build up of residue in there Right, so let's get that flipped. And then we can start turning out our middle. We're going to make sure we're going to push center and flush. So we don't. We might take a little. We're going to take a little bit more of this away, but we're going to work out how thick we're going to want it. But we're going to leave a center core in the middle to give it a little bit of stability as we turn it. So I'm going to sharpen my gouge up, and then we'll start taking it out. So with a nice sharp gouge. We're going to start taking this out and we want to be careful because obviously we don't want to do any damage to our pre coloured piece. It's a bit wobbly in there. I don't know why it's that wobbly. Shouldn't be as wobbly as that. Right, 
Oh, I can't do a bit of that right now. Because, uh, we've obviously pre-finished the face, but there's a little bit of a wobble on that for some reason. But anyway, so let's get a, start of taking some of this middle out. So I'm going to start taking a bit of this call back to start, start with. So we want a fairly consistent war. So let's get it consistent to start with. And then we got somewhere to go. Sand it up. So just quickly go through what I've done. Um, I gave this three coats of satin lacquer to give it a satin finish as you can see. Um, I'm now going to turn a piece for there to go in there out of that. Turn the inside out, finished up to 240 grit, sanded and sealed it, finished with Yorkshire grit. Give it three coats of high gloss wax. Now what I'll do is before I finish it and fill in the mortars I will pull it back on and just give it one final buff um, and finish it with a coat of microcrystalline just so it's finger uh, finger uh, touch proof and I may give the outside a coat of uh, Hampshire sheen microcrystalline as well I'm not 100% sure yet I'm not 100% sure to me I know what it's sound but it's a bit too much satin. I really wanted a bit of a sheen on it. I really wanted a little bit more of a shine on it, but it's got a little bit. But I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it. But the plan is, is because I don't like this foot, is I've got a piece of hair. I think it's a piece of cherry or something. So the idea is to turn this down and make it so it just sits over the edge of that foot and sits on there. And I'm going to leave this natural, I think, to um, finish it off. I'll have a look at it. If I don't like it, then I'll paint it black. But it's just going to be a thin base just to um, cover all this up, really. So let's get that turned. So first thing I'm going to do is just round this off. So let's go on a camera you can see. So we're just going to round this off. Right, so I've decided to keep this natural. I think that'll look better. Um, if the inside was coloured, then maybe do it the same, but I'm, I'm going to leave that natural. So we're going to sand it up to 400 grit. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to actually put anything on it at the moment because I want to laser the middle. 
So, uh, I'm going to put my logo on it and uh, the name of the bowl. Right, so that's sounded up to 400 grit. So, what I'm going to do now is take it to the laser. I'm going to laser engrave that. And uh, I will come back once we've got it all engraved. Then we'll get it sealed, sand and sealed, and uh, finished. I'm going to look like so. I'm going to leave it like that now, natural, I think. I think that'll just um, make it look a little bit better. Put too much colour on, just makes it look overwhelming. So, uh, I'll be back. Right, so here we are, all done. Laser engraved on the laser engraver. So hopefully we're just going to get this quickly sanded up and uh, should finish this off nicely and then we can get it finished, it's fitted to the bowl. So I'm just going to go over that quickly with a bit of uh, 320, 240, got a little bit of burnum. Um, I had the laser engraver turned up a little bit higher, it, should, it's only on, it was on 80%, it should have really been on about 60%. Because I did a test piece on a piece of plywood and that worked fine. But when I did, um, there was a little bit of burning on that. So I turned it down to uh, 10% and it still could have gone down a little bit more. I should have done another test room. But anyway, let's just quickly get that sand up. It won't take long to sand off of it. And then we'll get it sealed and then we'll get a final finish on it. So that's got rid of the scorching. So let's just finish it off with a bit of 240. Right. There we go. So let's get all the muck on that look. Right, looks much better now it's all cleaned up. Got a little bit of dust in the H. We've got it all blown out. So we're going to give it a cut of sand and sealer. I'm going to use some spray sand and sealer on there so we get right into the uh, the letter room because the letter room will be the porous part because obviously we've burnt the, we've burnt the fibres. So. We'll make sure we get right in there. So, give the outside of the coat first. And then we'll just gently. We're going to just cover the coats, making sure we get deep into those letters. Looks quite nice, I think. Just finishes it off, I think. So, we'll just let that dry. Not sure what finish to put on it. Um, if I put wax in it, I'm going to end up getting wax in the in the letter, and so I might might just wax the outer edge, or I could just get a nice sheen on it with uh, sand and sear and leave it at that. I don't know. We'll see. Just get a bit of Scotch Bright on that. Just Scotch Bright that up. Give that one more coat. Get rid of the dust out of the letters first, though. So that's dry now. So because I don't want to get wax all in the layers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish it with the sand and sealer on it and try and get a bit of a shine on it. So I'm going to use a bit of tissue. And I'm just going to rub the tissue over my sand and sealer to try and create a little bit of a shine just so I haven't got to wax it. 
As you can see, I just created a little bit of a sheen on there. Not high sheen, but just a little bit of a sheen, just to uh, um, give it enough to, to uh, obviously give it a little bit of a shine. So we haven't got to polish it because, like I say, it would get all the wax would get into those areas there. Right. So the next stage is is to finish the bowl. So let's get a towel. Let's move it on an overhead. So let's get a towel. Put on here. Let's get that. Don't need that now. Because so we don't scratch our bowl. Make sure we're all right. So get our bowl back over. So the only thing we've got left to do now is really to to fit this really. So we're just going to glue that in place, like so, depending on where we, ooh, no, not that often. Depending on where we want, I don't suppose it really matters where we put it. So I'm just going to get some glue on it, and I'm going to glue, put some super glue on this edge here, and we'll see if the pen will touch the bottom. Just if we put some super glue in the bottom there, and that should uh, catch, I think. Right, so we're going to put some super glue in the middle here, not for that way because it's all dried up. So then we're going to put a bead along the edge here as well. This is just medium super glue. Not too thin. And then we'll give our edge a piece of spray. Don't really need to do that, but we'll just stick that down for a few seconds. Well hopefully. We'll just leave that for a few couple of minutes and hopefully that will stick. Should be enough to do that. So that should be a Harlequin bowl. You can see it just on the edge there. Got a nice little gap all the way around there, which is nice. Just sits off the bench, which is nice. So yeah, I'm happy with that. It's been a right pain in the backside. This has. Uh, I originally started recording it, and I put a tenon on the back of it. I, I cut it all. I coloured it, I had it all finished, ready to turn the inside out, I put a tenon on it to grab into the chuck, 100mm tenon, I took two passes out the middle of it and the tenon snapped, partly my own fault, I should have had the tail stock up, if I had the tail stock up it perhaps wouldn't have broke out like it did, but it did, so never mind, so I had to start all over again, hence why I turned most of it, I put another mortise in the bottom, <coughs> I um, Flipped it, hollowed some of the middle out already, then created a tent on the inside, and that's when I came back and I started colouring it. So it's been a right pain. This is the fourth attempt of, yeah, fourth attempt of doing the first two colouring attempts. weren't quite happy with one had bleeding through, the other one I wasn't happy with the colour variation, so I took it all off again. Then the third one I liked, so I left it, and then hence the uh, tenon broke off but anyway we are there now so it doesn't really matter so just go through what we did um, cut it all back shaped it sanded it to 400 grit 
We then masked up with the 5 4mm thin masking tape to give us all the nice neat lines. Coloured with the Hampshire Sheen uh, Carnival colours. And then we used Black Intrinsic just to give us the 3D shadow. Then we gave it three coats of satin lacquer. And then we hollowed out the inside. Inside was hollowed or turned out. Sanded up to 240 grit. Yorkshire gritted original up to 1000 grit. Then Hampshire Sheen high gloss wax um, on the inside. I was going to give us another pop buff up, but it's, now it's dry, it's quite nice. I'm just going to get a cloth and just clean it, buff it all up. Um, and then obviously we turn that. I think it's a piece of U um, just to cover the bottom up because I, I wanted to cover that mortise up in the bottom. And I also wanted to be able to put my uh, logo in the bottom. So I think that does both ways. Um, I think it hits both marks with one process. I actually quite like that actually because I can rather than messing around with the laser engraver have to raise it right up I can actually laser engrave that way as it is and then just glue it in place it doesn't really matter to be honest but um, it's just another stage just that's what it is it's just another stage isn't it but other than that I'm quite happy about it so anyway guys I'll put some pictures on at the end thank you very much for watching um, hope you've enjoyed sorry it's been so long but other than that thanks for watching take care speak to you soon and bye for now